Hello, everyone. This is our first video on the usage of physical oversampling in Python. And I will assume the, the viewers already have some experience of using satellite data and also using the Python language. So today we will demonstrate the process of oversampling one day of tropomi no 2 level two data over the contiguous United States into uh, a map of level three. So the level three data are defined on a regular grid. So uh, we will download the tropomi l 2 data from NASA GIS disk. So if you, uh, if you search tropomi l 2 you will find a, a list and this particular link contains the most recent tropomi l 2 level two data. So we can subset the data by defining um, the temporal and spatial range. So here it's already um, from the beginning of September, 2021 to the end of September. And we can define this region uh, of uh, contiguous United States. Draw that again. Okay, and after you have defined the spatial temporal range, click get data. So it will give you a list of links um, where you can download each level two orbit separately. And click here, you can save this text file into your, uh, into your system. So I have already done that uh, and saved it in um, uh, in my file system, it looks like this. So each line will be um, corresponding to one level two orbit. And to download the, the data, you will need uh, some mechanisms to grab data from this URL. So I used uh, the wget in the Linux, Linux system and to make it uh, work for the, the GIS disk, uh, you will need to uh, specify some files that contains your, the information of your NASA account. So I have already done that uh, and my system already works for this wget command. And then we can uh, open a Jupyter notebook. So it's a Python implementation. Um, and download the level two data. So here I imported a, a few pretty standard Python languages and I want to see the progress. So I'm going to uh, set the, the login level to info so that I can see all the messages from um, the, the, the file running above the info level. So the physical oversampling in Python code is available here on GitHub. Um, and I have a lo local copy uh, in my system. And first I want to make sure it's up to date. Okay, so it's already up to date. And this is the directory for that contains that poppy.py script. So I added that to the path and then I can import functions from this poppy library. So this is the, the txt file uh, right here, um, the path to that txt file in my system. And I want to save the downloaded data into the directory like here. Then I have this, um, this downloading function that, um, that can separate um, the individual level two orbits um, that fall within the start and the end date time. Um, remember, I downloaded the entire September's data uh, over the, the contiguous United States. Um, but uh, for now, I just want to download uh, for one day um, 
over the 1st of September. So it will scan um, this TXT file line by line and find uh, a pattern like this. So eight digits and then a capital T followed by six digits. So if we look at one line over here, uh, the first uh, occurrence will be this one. So that is the start date and time for the orbit. And the second occurrence will be the end. Um, so that is specified by this start and end index so that uh, the function will know the start and end time of that orbit and then compare that with the, the time interval that we have specified. Um, so it will only um, save those relevant orbits into a temporary TXT file and then use wget to download the files in that. Uh, and you can optionally delete or, or save that temporary, uh, temporary TXT file after the downloading is complete. So I have already um, done that. Um, so I will not download them again because it will take a short while to uh, even grab one day of triple mean level two data as those real level two data files are pretty large. So you can see uh, for uh, the first of September, the level two data are already there. Then next, we will run a high level wrapper function within Poppy to um, oversample or to regrade uh, the one day of Chopomi data from level two to level three. Um, so if you go to the first of the, the Poppy file, um, the beginning of the poppy file, the first function um, is this wrapper function. And it returns a level three data object. Okay, so you have to specify the name of the instrument. For this case, it's chop only, and the product is L2. The grid size, um, we will start by over something into a latitude and longitude grid. So the grid size will be in degree. And a general rule of using the physical over something uh, is to have the grid size um, about at least a, a factor of two smaller than the resolution of level two pixels. So for Chopomi, the level two pixel is about um, five by three kilometers. Um, and as a result, I would recommend to oversample to about 0.01 uh, degree or so, or about one to two kilometers. And you can specify the start and, and end date time um, to average the data, uh, to, let, to average level two into level three. Um, but I don't recommend using um, the um, uh, the, the, the date and time here. Instead, um, let's use the start data array and end data array. Um, so say we want to um, oversample the data from September 1st to uh, September 2nd. And now this is a date time object. So you can specify down to um, seconds or, or even microseconds. Okay. And we want to oversample over the contiguous United States. So you specify uh, the boundaries in longitude and latitude here. is 51 uh, and the column amount um, you can choose between um, mole per square meter or molecules per square centimeter um, for tropomi data I, I i found it's more convenient to use this unit um, this argument uh, if you use a pre-saved level 2g so there is one option 
uh, actually a preferred option uh, by myself is to save the level two data into the subset version. Uh, and I call that level two G. Uh, but in this case, um, for this first video, we are demonstrating over something directly from the level two data. Um, as we can see, those are the, the real level two data uh, downloaded from uh, the GIS disk. So that means we are not using the pre-saved subset. So that will be false. Um, the subsetting function um, for triple me L2, I already have, have the subsetting function. Um, so you don't have to specify this, um, but in case you want to build your own subsetting function, um, you can add that into the, um, the Poppy library and then uh, specify the function name right here. This level two pass pattern tells the program where to find the level two files. Okay, let's go to our level two directories. It's organized like this. So this is the, um, the root directory. followed by the name of the level two data. So that means before to the left of the cursor, the file names are the same. Um, and this is the string that identifies the, um, the time of the orbit. So we can replace this by something that can be recognized by the date time um, package in Python. Okay, so this way, um, um, this wrapper function can recognize the, the structure of level two files. Um, and in some cases, um, the level two structures are further divided into uh, more layer of folders. Um, so sometimes the level two data are saved like this. So if in your system, the level two data are saved like this, uh, you can simply replace the year uh, by the percentage, percentage sign capital Y. Uh, and same for month and date uh, and day. Uh, but in our case, all the level two files are directly under this directory. So that will just work. And we will plot the level three object after it's generated. Um, so during this process, we are not going to make the plot. So those two arguments are about the, the, the parallelization. Uh, if n cores is zero, then it runs in series, but here we will use 40 cores. Um, the block length, um, so we divide the level three grid into blocks, uh, into square blocks. So usually here I choose a, a few hundreds. Well, let's try 300. Um, and don't worry about those two for now. We already have the start and, and arrays. For the projections, if it's none, then that means the level three data will be on a latitude and longitude grid. Uh, and we will talk about the options for projection uh, in the later videos. So now it reads the level two data one by one. Uh, and then divide the level three grid into blocks, then send those blocks into those 40 cores and those, will, uh, those cores will work in parallel. So it will take a, a short while given we are dealing with tropomy data uh, with a pretty fine grid size and over a, a pretty large domain. So once this process is done, we can plot the level three data. So if you want a quick plot, 
simply uh, level three dot plot. Okay, we will wait for all those cores to complete their jobs. Um, and remember, we are using a pretty fine uh, grid size. So in some cases, you may want to coarsen them. Um, then there is a very nice block reduce function. So you can reduce um, the, uh, you can increase the, the level three grid size. Let's see, uh, we want to average by a factor of 50 and then plot the result. Um, and all those plot functions will return the um, a dictionary that contains the, the figure axis objects um, so that you can edit them afterwards. So it's done. Let's make a quick plot. So you will see gaps in the in the plot. Uh, that's because some basic filtering is already applied, such as cloud fraction, uh, and uh, for tropomy, the QE value is already applied. Um, and then let's just quickly demonstrate this block reduce feature. So now it's uh, averaged into this um, 0.5 degree. Um, uh, the, the, course, the, the course resolution grid. And you can add arguments to make them consistent. The max column amount, let's say it's um, 150. Make them consistent. And there will be more options, um, and I will cover them in the following tutorials. Um, so that's it for our first tutorial. Um, so please leave a comment or send me an email uh, if you feel any of those um, are were, were unclear. Uh, and thanks everyone for watching.